Uh, I'd like to emphasize that initiative is working, and I hope that uh, volumes will be increased in several uh, in, in next in, in several next weeks, and we will reach uh, our initial aims uh, export of. Uh, at least 3 million tons per month and up to 5 million in separate months. So, uh, again, I'd like to emphasize uh, the role of uh, Secretary General Antonio Guterres and President Zelensky and our Turkish partners, which provided uh, guarantees for implementation of this initiative. Thank you very much. It is moving to be here in Odessa, and it is especially meaningful to be here on World Humanitarian Day. For months, this port was paralyzed. Ships like those here were within minutes of sailing fully loaded with grains and other cargo. These vessels were ordered back, a critical transportation line from a global breadbasket was cut. The Black Sea Grain Initiative is changing that. In less than a month, 25 ships have departed from Odessa and other Ukrainian ports loaded with grain and other food supplies, with more on their way, as the minister has explained. They have carried well over 600,000 tons of food products and counting. Wheat, corn, sunflower oil, soya beans. But each ship is also a vessel of hope. Hope for Ukrainian farmers, finally rewarded for their harvest, with storage being freed up for more. Hope for seafarers and the larger shipping community, knowing that it is once again possible to sail through the Black Sea safely and efficiently. And most of all, hope for the world's most vulnerable people and countries. Here from Odessa, on World Humanitarian Day, I want to make a special appeal to the wealthier world for those bearing the brunt of the global food crisis. As these ports open, I appeal for wealthier countries to also open their wallets and their hearts. After all, the movement of grains doesn't mean much to countries that cannot afford it. Lower prices on the global food markets don't mean much if those prices aren't reflected in local food markets. A country cannot feed itself if it is starved for resources. Today, Odessa is more than just a shipping center. This port is a symbol of what the world can do when we commit to work together for the common good. The Ukrainian people has been suffering so much. We have witnessed so many deaths, so many destruction, that it is legitimate to aspire for peace. But again, I repeat, peace in line with the UN Charter peace in line with international law. That is the best way to mark World Humanitarian Day and help set the course for a more just and peaceful world for all. Thank you. The International Agency of Atomic Energy is uh, an autonomous agency that has a very clear mandate and that has a board. So uh, it is for the uh, IAEA to decide uh, how and when and how uh, to uh, develop uh, uh, an inspection or a visit or a presence in Zaporizhia. What we have said is that the UN, as in the Ukraine, the UN Secretariat, as in the Ukraine, the capacity, logistic and uh, um, uh, security capacity to support the IAEA, if that is required, to move from Kyiv to Zaporizhia. But uh, uh, decisions in relation to these are decisions of the IAEA, naturally uh, uh, with the consent uh, of uh, the parties, and obviously with the consent uh, of the Ukrainian government too.